Alright, uh, today I'm gonna give you a short tutorial, not a short tutorial, but a tutorial on drifting. Uh, I've been getting a lot of requests on making something like that, so here it is. Um, so I'm just gonna start a new, start a new project, and I'm just gonna start a new vehicle project. And let's go with drift project. And let's create that. All right, now the project is open. It took, took a while for me to open up. I'm just gonna change the sun. You don't have to do it. I just like to have it a little bit differently. Uh, that should be fine. Um, by default, there's a player start over here. So if you click on the player start, or if you just click play, then the car will spawn. And then you can drive around, have a good time. Very nice. But we don't want to have a good time, we want to drift. And have even a better time. So, the biggest issue with Chaos Vehicle is that power is being cut to the wheels. So, let me s let's see if I can probably demonstrate it. Uh, components, let's see over here. And then, get engine. Rotation speed, and I'm just gonna do a print. Print. Okay, print string will probably work. There, and I'm also going to. Let's hook it up into the event tick. Over here, and also append. The pinned, you can say what value you are debugging. So, this is just for debugging purposes. I just want to show you. So, engine RPM, and then just have a few spaces after it, like that. And now, if I'm correct, you will see engine RPM here on the side, but I don't want it like that. So let's just open this up. Duration on zero. And let's make it red. Why not? All right. Now, if we go here, now we see over here, engine RPM is 900, which is all well and good. Now, normally with drifting, what you would do is you would try to decrease the amount of grip you have in your car so that's what i'm going to do quickly this is i'm in the vehicle movement component here on the side and i'm just i just want to get to the wheel settings so here's wheels front uh let's open up wheels front i'm not actually going to touch it now let's go to wheels rear now corner let's do something like make the core ring stiffness 50 and friction force one. I'm curious what that's going to do. The car is most likely gonna spin. Okay, so it does spin a little bit. Mm, you can see the wheels spinning and stuff, but the car is not really going anywhere. And also, we can see on the RPM, even though I'm holding in W the whole time, it does sort of cut a little bit of the throttle. Okay, let's see if I can pick up some speed. Mm. Okay, I'm not planning on being like that. Okay. Alright. But, you guys probably know, what happens is the throttle or the the throttle is being cut so let's turn it back to i'm going to turn it back to two and have cornering stiffness let's make it 250. this is now for the rear wheels now let's go to the front wheels for the front wheels i'm gonna have the cornering stiffness of 200 and the friction force at let's say 1.8 Okay, and 
and max wheel spin rotation let's switch it to 25,000 and I'm also going to switch it to additive so let's compile that that's for the front wheels let's compile that uh, for the front wheels let's give it a little bit more steering angle let's give it about 65 degrees of steering angle okay so now let's go to the vehicle advanced pawn and we are going to create a new function to get rid of the power cutting so let me type let me make a branch over here so we can select if we want that that power cutting or not and if it's true like that and drag off over here and promote this to a variable uh, enable power cutting with a question mark why not and then please compile the blueprint after it's enabled nice and now we're going to create a new function so over here just click on the plus and i'm going to say uh, torque cutting torque cutting fix right now i instead of making the whole blueprint from scratch <laughs> all right so this is the blueprint that i made quite a long time ago April 13th it's been a while uh, we're gonna use this as a base so we I am gonna change a few things um, this input access value I'm just gonna change it to get throttle input so what I'm gonna do I'm just gonna, gonna take this thing just gonna just gonna copy this control C let's see if this works control V there we are now this is a system it i call it a torque cutting by gear system so if you if you have a car with seven gears with every single gear it will it will decrease the amount of torque you will push through so yeah okay so over here instead of get throttle I'm going to do this. I'm going to get throttle. Get throttle input. And I'm going to replace this get throttle because it, this get throttle uses the old input system and now we're using the enhanced input system. So I'm just going to get rid of that and connect it like. Not like so. That's not gonna work. <laughs> so from false. So what this does, if the gear is um, so get target gear if it's greater than one. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna do this with all of them. what I want to do. <laughs> I'm not good at making tutorials, okay? Take it easy on me. Alright, so give me the component. And we're gonna see this will make a huge difference. Okay, so here we have torque multiplier. I'm just gonna right click on it, say create variable torque multiplier. And here's first gear torque. So promote the var no, no, promote the variable. That's not what you're supposed to do. Let's create variable. And now second gear and third gear I think we probably I'm just gonna use until fourth gear torque I don't think it's necessary to have all of these 
So I'm just gonna delete the uh, other gear. So it's so we only have this torque cutting fix of being applied to the first gear, second gear, third gear, and fourth gear. All right. So third gear torque, create variable. This one also, create variable, and just gonna paste this here, paste here, paste here and connect them and connect that connect this into instead of get throttle The reason why I use throttle is because the throttle kind of activates the effect. Okay, so now you have torque multiplier. And I'm going to set this to something silly. Say something like 100. And now first gear torque. Let's see how much torque this car has. So let's go to the sports car pawn. And because these are variables, we can actually go change them. So if you go to sports car pawn over here, you see all these variables over here. So you can tweak them per vehicle, which is kind of cool. So let's see how much torque this car has. Engine setup 750. So <clears throat> I think maybe with the torque, it doesn't need to be that high. So let's say first get torque. Let me make this a 450. 50 and maybe with this one 350 third gear torque 250 and fourth gear torque make this 150 all right now let's compile this then take this new function that we made and then just drop it in here Set this to true, on true, and also even on false, connect to that. So all you do is when you click true, then it will apply the torque cutting fix, but it will not disable these other ones. So let's go to compile and save. Let's give it a try. And there we already have it. Quite nice drifting physics and we see the RPMs stay high. If you look on the top on the top uh, left corner, the RPMs stay high even though we are sliding. Which is pretty cool. Which is quite the which is the purpose of the store cutting fix. So that gives you some nice drifting physics. Okay. Now you can you can probably end the video right here. But let's add some add a few other stuff if I remember how to do them. Now for the steering, I want to have a little bit of a steering assist. So we can have because it looks kind of weird when the car is sliding sideways and the car is not counter steering. So let's go and implement a steering assist. It's very basic, it's not as advanced as other ones. So let's go to the, let's choose the mesh and say get component velocity as well as get right a vector. And then we want to normalize this, that's also for the right vector. And then we're gonna dot product. Which is gonna take these two values and combine them, or then I return the dot product of two 3D vectors and okay, cool. And then we're going to multiply this. And we are also gonna add it. 
and then we're going to clamp that value. We'll get to this right now, to negative one and one. And this is going to be connected to the steering. So the action value is going to be connected to the add. And over here, we're going to create a new variable. And this is going to in this is going to be it's going to determine how intense the steering assist is. So I'm going to call it steering assist intensity. All right, and I'm going to let's compile it. I'm going to give it a value of one. All right, that looks good. Let's go and check and see if it works. Now what's going to do, what it's going to do is the car is automatically going to count the steer when it's going sideways. So I am not pressing the left or the right stick. I'm playing on my controller now. So it's completely counter steering by itself. Pretty sweet. Pretty cool. All right. Uh, a little bit of a drawback of this of this little system is that it's dependent on your car's steering rise and fall rate. The vehicle input advanced steering rise and fall rate. I'm gonna set this to uh, I'm gonna say six and six. And also, I'm just gonna straighten this curve. I don't know why it's like that. Uh, set it to Ackerman and one. Let's compile that. Pretty cool. So now it's completely counter steering by itself. Cool. All right, so this is how to get some basic drifting, drifting physics. Uh, that doesn't cut the power to the rear wheels. Uh, as you can see in the top right, uh, top left corner, I'm holding in the throttle and the RPM is still high. It doesn't cut like what Chaos Vehicle normally does. Um, I guess the reason for it is now not everybody wants to make a drifting game. Uh, people most likely just want to use Chaos Vehicle in the first person shooter just to have like a basic vehicle so yeah all right so that's uh that's it yeah have fun cheerio